In my project is about Liberian traditional names. I interviewed my mother. I actually learned that you get two names, one when you're born, and then another when you go through your, um, it's called a society bush. So you, that's where you go and learn all about the culture, the tribe, yourself. And once you go through that initiation process, you get a new name, which is permanent. Lighting is difficult, especially when your walls are not white. That was challenging, and it taught me a lot about lights, <laughs> whether it's natural light or not. I didn't solve the problem, but at least I didn't have too shadow, because with lighting in a wall that's like eggplant color, sometimes you have like shadows because you have too many lights. So I had to eliminate lights or add more lights or move things back and forth. But eventually we got a good color. Over prepare if you have to, just plan for it. That's the biggest thing. Cause even though I plan ahead of time, like right when it was happening, that's when I started running into stuff. And yeah, you can plan and then you run into stuff and you don't know what to do, but it's just good to have a plan. That way it's easier to handle. Next is trying to do B-rolls and figure that out and what I really want to shoot because this is not like, you know, I'm not in the environment for what I'm making a, the, the film about. So how do I use, you know, material in this environment that doesn't work to make it work for what I'm doing? So that's the next step. My documentary is focusing on abuse and assault, um, some of these really negative actions, harmful actions, and how uh, the way that we connotate people who engage in abusive or assaultive actions, as well as the way we punish people who engage in abusive or assaultive actions, um, perpetuates abusive slash assaultive actions. For my first interview, it was two, at the, I mean, I spoke with them one right after another, but two at the same time, essentially. Um, they were both organizers from an activist group called FASTEN, which is the Feminist Action Network um, in Chicago. And they were up here in Minneapolis teaching um, a couple classes on restorative justice and sort of alternative ways of holding people accountable without going through the criminal justice system. So I spoke to two of their organizers, um, Taylor, um, and plus sign. From those interviews, I learned that it's really hard to make restorative justice models work. I also learned that I wasn't particularly prepared for those interviews. I was going to their class and was just like, oh, I should bring my camera and kind of grab things at the last minute. So I think in the future I would probably want to have a little bit more um, ready. I learned technically that I should sit down. <laughs> That's one thing that I wish I had done. I was standing up, so they're like looking ever so slightly um, above the, the camera or like above me or whatever. Well, sound was kind of a struggle too because I didn't have um, a lavalier mic. Is that what these are called? I didn't have a lavalier mic. I had um, like a shotgun mic, and I couldn't get, I couldn't figure out how to get close to them without getting the microphone in the camera frame. What I want to get across is the idea that these are actions that anyone can commit, given the right set of circumstances. Um, so I was thinking of doing not quite like reenactments, but getting a large number of of people together to read these narratives and splice those together in such a way that you have this like litany of voices describing something that is essentially all in one, one context, all one story.